Now the question is, does any Palestinian leader really want the Palestinian conflict to end? If the conflict ends, they don't profit anymore. There is no need for them anymore. This is why they ask for impossible things, that they actually, there, there's no solution uh, for their uh, political ambition. There, there is no satisfaction, nobody can satisfy them. And they know this uh, truth. But by sending people to die, the world has to pay them off, you know? And uh, this is the fuel uh, for their uh, uh, endless uh, cycle of, uh, of violence. Sixty-five percent of the uh, residents of Gaza are living in, under the poverty line because of the uh, totalitarian regime of, of Hamas in Gaza. All the funds that come to Hamas in Gaza, they're invested in building tunnels, and building a military wing, rather than bringing milk to the children of Gaza. Right now, you see it's like the, the reality. This is how I, I, how I observe it. I don't know how uh, intelligence services see it. I don't know how the donors uh, in the European Union see it. And I don't care how they see it. For me, I see Mahmoud Abbas cutting electricity from the Gaza Strip, cutting milk, medicine. Now the situation in Gaza Strip at the edge of another conflict. What I see, Mahmoud Abbas wants Hamas to attack Israel. So Israel will attack Hamas. As outcome, children will die. So this is the Palestinian uh, leadership mentality. When they don't have money, when the United States cut funds or reduce the funds from Mahmoud Abbas, he would say, sacrifice a few hundred uh, children in Gaza Strip so the world can outrage against Israel. And Mahmoud Abbas will uh, raise uh, billions of dollars out of this uh, suffering. How he is going to spend it? I don't know. Gaza does not have electricity, does not have medicine. People are dying. Children are dying in hospitals because they don't have electricity in the hospital. They don't have medication. The average person, you know, who don't know all dimensions of this conflict will look at Gazan uh, children dying. Israel is going to be uh, the party to, to, to blame. Uh, even though Israel will open its hospitals, even though Israel will ask civilians to evacuate, to get out from certain areas so they can come and deal with the tunnel problems, and Hamas will force civilians to stay. And in their ignorance, they will stay. There will be uh, civilian uh, casualties. In, instead of blaming Israel, you need to blame the party that used civilians as human shields. So this will bring us again and again like for like how many dimensions to this conflict and how it's played by infinite forces of existence. Mahmoud Abbas considered, you know, the moderate Palestinian uh, leader. You know, his partner. His partner, he's a criminal. He knows how to get away with it. He knows how to manipulate international public. And this is why I don't like blaming Israel. You know, it's the easiest thing to do. You know, just blame Israel, what's so-called occupation, which is non-existence. And I say non-existence because Palestinians has the, uh, or have the opportunity of uh, being independent. And Israel will definitely help them. Israel has no interest of controlling the Palestinians' uh, lives. They don't take taxations from them. They don't need nothing from the Palestinian people. Actually, the Palestinian people take a lot from Israel. And Israel is willing to give more and more to help them on uh, every level. Israel is always at defense, always. 99% of the wars that happened between Israel and Arabians, Israel was at defense. And possibly the only time it launched a war against uh, Egypt, it was also in the understanding of defense. So the world can go on uh, of denying this reality and this truth. Uh, but we all will pay a price. And uh, it's time for us to take responsibility, to choose, you know, which side, you know, and I'm not talking about side of t taking side of Israel as a political regime, but taking the side of a successful model that respects uh, the uh, human 
dignity, respects uh, uh, the human rights, and open for all type uh, religions. You know, we have all religions practiced in the state of Israel. And this is another reason, you know, if you ask me why. When I look at Israel and see Christianity practiced uh, freely, uh, Islam is practiced uh, f freely. This is the model that I would like to see in other Arab countries. In the, in the Arab world, the upper hand is for the religious authorities. It's not for a civil constitution. It's to the uh, culture and the unwritten law. This is not good. This is not going to help the human evolution. We need to uh, understand that this is against the evolvement of individuals in the Arab world. This is another reason why uh, I choose uh, to believe in the Israeli model, in the democratic uh, model, to believe in uh, theories. Uh, this is why we have all this problem, you know, uh, uh, self-deluded people who go and blow themselves uh, up. You know, thinking that they're going to go to paradise. You know, it doesn't get darker than this. This is the problem of belief. And nobody wants to be a traitor. For me, it was a choice I made. I knew that my people will consider me as a traitor. I knew that. And it's by choice. And I'm not afraid to be labeled as a traitor because I know what I am. And I don't need the validation of the majority of our people uh, to come and tell me what you did was right or wrong. Uh, for me, I stand for my own truth and uh, I'm not concerned of uh, the lies of uh, societies. How can other people like you break that uh, powerful hold that the likes of Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, any other kind of dangerous Islamist faction out there, how can that cord be broken? Well, you have to be willing to die first, you know. You'll have to, uh, to have the courage to assassinate your ego, everything you learned, all your uh, conditioning. You know, this is a universal problem. That's the human condition that we are facing. You know, oppression and violence, corruption, uh, manipulation it will keep uh, many people in, uh, in darkness. And yes, people are afraid. You know, I was afraid. I was afraid to go against the flow of the society. You think I was not afraid uh, getting into the unknown, writing a book uh, that uh, condemned me, and uh, it was uh, like crucifying myself. So I don't expect from everyone, you know, in, in that region to go on a suicidal mission like me. And not to be afraid of who you truly are and go out to the society and tell them, this is what I did, this is my individuality, I don't regret it, and I share it with you, because I would like for you to see through my lenses. This is uh, the book, and revealing uh, the events of my life in the form of uh, human language that is two-dimensional, that cannot defend itself. But I made it available for the individuals who are willing to transcend politics, to transcend culture, to transcend human mind, and see a higher truth of what's happening. It came from a place of love, place of responsibility. Nobody forced me to write the book. It was a suicide ambition. But again, projecting what I am in that book was much more dangerous much more challenging than hanging out in a room full of explosives and suicide bombers.